$1,000 might be a lot of bread, but your daughter's life is the butter topping. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 creepiest disappearance stories. The portion of ransom money a family discovered buried in sand while camping along a sandbar, Tina Bar, in the Columbia River in 1980. For this list, we're looking at the strangest and most terrifying stories about people who vanished. We will be including the stories of people who have since been found. Which of these tales chills your blood the most? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Ryan Chambers. This is a picture of Ryan Chambers, missing from Rishikesh, India, since August 2005. In June of 2005, Ryan Chambers embarked on a spiritual journey to India with his friend John Booker. However, after a while, Booker noticed that Chambers wasn't getting much sleep and was beginning to act strangely. Then, in the early morning of August 24th, the 21-year-old Australian simply walked out of his ashram wearing nothing but a pair of shorts. He left behind all his belongings and an eerie note reading, quote, If I'm gone, don't worry. I'm not dead. I'm freeing minds. But first, I have to free my own. No one has seen or heard from him since. An exhaustive search was launched, but after turning up nothing for years, Chambers was legally declared dead in 2023. Number 19, the Fort Worth Missing Trio. Rachel Trelisa, Renee Wilson, and Julianne Mosley were Christmas shopping in the Fort Worth, Texas Seminary South Shopping Center when they went missing. The girls failed to return to their respective homes, prompting their families to conduct a search. There's something that's happened to them. I know it. They found Trelisa's car in the parking lot, and it contained multiple gifts, indicating that the girls had returned to the vehicle at some point. Nevertheless, the trio was nowhere to be seen. Trelisa's husband later received a letter presumably written by her, stating that they were, quote, going to Houston to, quote, get away, and they'd be back in about a week. But they never showed up and have remained missing ever since. The families have since cast doubt on the letter's authenticity. My goal is I, I would love closure before my mother dies. Before because just like in 1974, you haven't given up hope, though. No, huh? Number 18, Brandon Swanson. On May 14, 2008, Brandon Swanson of Minnesota was driving home following a night out partying. After veering off into a ditch, the 19-year-old student phoned his parents and asked them to pick him up. Swanson's parents remained on the phone with him for the next 47 minutes, but couldn't seem to find him at his supposed location. He said he was fine, but he was not injured. And, you know, in fact, when we did find his vehicle, there was no damage to it. Still on the call, Swanson asked his dad to meet him at a local bar, but soon after, he yelled out a curse word and went silent. Investigators later found that the young man was actually about 25 miles away from where he thought he was. It's believed he inadvertently fell into the Yellow Medicine River and drowned, hence the sudden cursing. Number 17, Bobby Dunbar. The story of Bobby Dunbar is a bizarre one. You know, speculation was that he was taken. They assumed he was kidnapped. Bobby disappeared on a family fishing trip on August 23, 1912. Authorities then found a boy matching his description with a man named William Walters. Walters insisted that the kid was actually named Bruce Anderson, which was corroborated by Anderson's mother, Julia, who claimed that she allowed her son to go on a trip with him. The case went to trial, and Anderson was eventually handed to the Dunbars, with whom he lived the rest of his life. Unable to afford a lawyer, Julia lost her case and had her reputation soiled in the media. However, a future DNA test proved that the kid was, in fact, not Dunbar, lending further credence to Julia's story. Number 16, Margaret Fox. In 1974, Margaret Fox advertised her services as a babysitter, attracting the attention of one John Marshall. Marshall contacted Fox and told her to meet him in Mount Holly, New Jersey. The young girl traveled there on a bus and was never seen again. The authorities were immediately contacted and they traced Marshall's number to a supermarket payphone, which raised suspicions. The Fox family also received a phone call from a stranger, demanding $10,000 for their daughter's safe return. Unfortunately, this call could never be traced and the man was never identified. Despite investigators' efforts, the case eventually fizzled out, with no one finding Fox or figuring out the identity of Marshall ever since. There's a likelihood that Margaret may be deceased. It is our mission that if this is the case, Margaret receives a proper burial. Number 15, George Mallory and Andrew Irvin. The story of George Mallory and Andrew Irvin captures the horror of mountain climbing and the endless allure of Everest. 
both men took part in the ill-fated British Mount Everest expedition of 1924, hoping to be the first people to reach the top. They were last spotted about 800 feet from the summit, but promptly disappeared. The men were soon presumed dead and publicly mourned as heroes of Britain. Their whereabouts remained a mystery for the next 75 years, until the Mallory and Irvin Research Expedition located Mallory's preserved corpse in 1999. I heard out of my radio, which was in my down suit, I just heard hobnail boot. Quickly unzipped it and said, what? It was found with a puncture wound in the forehead, suggesting that he had fallen and accidentally struck himself with his ice axe. This guy was a really talented climber. It took a, a great degree of skill and confidence to go with that limited amount of gear to that distance. Irvin's body has yet to be found. Number 14, Marjorie West. Called the great unsolved mystery of the missing by The Guardian, the story of Marjorie West is a fascinating one. West was picnicking with her family on May 8, 1938 when she went missing. The story goes that West's sister Dorothea left her unattended to, but upon her return, the child was gone. A massive search was undertaken involving thousands of people, but the effort was unsuccessful. Then police commissioner P.W. Foote believed that West had been playing hide and seek when she got lost. However, a man named Harold Beck later wrote a book positing that West was kidnapped and grew up with her captors as Sylvia London. Beck claimed that London eventually confessed to being West, but she passed away in 2009. Number 13, Frederick Valentich. Australian pilot Frederick Valentich was a student in the country's air training corps. In the evening of October 21, 1978, Valentich was flying over Bass Strait, which separates mainland Australia from Tasmania. During the flight, Valentich contacted Melbourne Flight Service to report an unidentified aircraft that was following him. Delta Sierra Juliet, there seems to be a large aircraft below 5,000. The craft had bright lights and seemed to be hovering right above him. Just after telling Flight Service that it wasn't an aircraft, a loud scraping noise was heard over the radio. Valentich was lost and his plane was never recovered. Flying a single engine aeroplane over water, lost communication in such strange circumstances, uh, I put an alert phase on the aeroplane. Ufologists believe that the pilot was abducted by a UFO, while others posit that he was unknowingly flying upside down and saw his own reflection in the water before crashing. Number 12, Evelyn Hartley. Teenager Evelyn Hartley was tasked with babysitting the daughter of Vigo Rasmussen, one of her parents' colleagues. Hartley arrived at the house as planned, but when she failed to check in later that evening, her father Richard gave her a call. There was no response, so he traveled to the Rasmussen house himself. He found a wild sight, as items were thrown everywhere and the furniture had been moved. There were also signs of a break-in, including a torn-off window screen, pry marks, footprints, and blood. The baby was found unharmed upstairs, but there was no sign of Hartley. A witness reported seeing two men driving away with a young girl, adding credence to the theory that Hartley was kidnapped in a break-in. Number 11, He Jiankui. In November 2018, this Chinese biophysicist made world headlines when he announced he'd created the first genetically edited human babies. I understand my work will be controversial, but I believe family need this technology. His claim was met with widespread condemnation due to serious ethical issues with his experiment. His research was suspended, he was fired from SusTech, and then he disappeared. He was last seen at the Human Genome Editing Conference in Hong Kong on Wednesday. The South China Morning Post reports that the researcher's employer is dismissing claims he was detained. In December, it was reported that he was sequestered in an apartment under guard, but there remained unanswered questions regarding his whereabouts and well-being. One year later, he was sentenced to three years in prison and was released in April 2022. It's game over for He Jiankou, who thought he could tweak life and get away with it. Number 10, the Sodders. A devastating fire erupted in the Sodder household on Christmas Eve, 1945. The Sodder parents and four of their nine children escaped, but the other five weren't so lucky. The easy theory is that the children died in the fire, but the story contains many twists that cast some doubt. No evidence of the bodies was ever found. Furthermore, Patriarch George Sauter spoke negatively about his then-fascist native Italy, prompting a theory that the Sicilian Mafia had burned the house and kidnapped the children. Years later, a photo of an older man was mailed to the Sauters, purportedly depicting a now-grown Louis. 
They agreed that the man harbored a resemblance to their missing child, and they both held on to this hope until their deaths. Number 9. Lauren Spearer In 2011, 20-year-old Lauren Spearer was attending Indiana University and studying textiles merchandising. On the night of June 2, 2011, Spearer went out with some friends to Bloomington's Kilroy Sports Bar. She left the bar around 2.30 a.m. and was last seen leaving a friend's apartment at 4.30. She remains missing to this day. The latest images come from a security camera, according to the authorities. Here's one of them, which police say shows Lauren just hours before she disappeared. Various theories have been put forth, including abduction and a fatal overdose, as Spearer had reportedly consumed alcohol and drugs. One theory is that Lauren was kidnapped by a biker gang after collapsing in the street on the way to her apartment. Despite thousands of tips and attempts by police to tie her disappearance to other crimes in the area, Lauren Spears' whereabouts remain unknown. I really just would like to hear this is where you can find your daughter. It's the not knowing what happened to her, where she might be, or, you know, it's, it's unbearable. Number 8. Lars Mittunk One of the strangest and creepiest stories involving a disappearance has to be that of 28-year-old German man Lars Mittunk. In June 2014, Mittunk was vacationing at Bulgaria's Golden Sand Seaside Resort with friends. When it was time to leave, Mitank was left in the country owing to a ruptured eardrum, which prevented him from flying. He checked into the Hotel Color Varna by himself, where he reportedly began to act paranoid. He even called his mother and told her that four men were looking to get rid of him. The last time anyone saw Mitank, he was running through Varna Airport in fear, hopping a fence and fleeing into the nearby woods. He hasn't been seen since. The source of his fear and his current whereabouts remain unknown. Number 7. Maura Murray On February 9, 2004, Murray, a nursing student at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, emailed her professors claiming there'd been a death in the family. It is a real mystery. One minute she's here, one minute she's not, and there's just so many theories. Her parents have since stated that no such death occurred. She looked into hotels in Vermont, loaded her car with clothing and toiletries, and packed up her belongings in boxes. After leaving campus, she purchased alcohol and withdrew $280 from an ATM. Murray crashed her car around 7 p.m. that night, and when police arrived at 7.45, she was nowhere to be found. There was no injury, so they searched on foot and in vehicles. Basically, what they were looking for was A, a person walking, or B, footprints in the snow. They found none. The responding officer found a few suspect items in the car, including driving directions to Vermont and blank accident report forms. Of Murray herself, there was and has been no trace. All I have left is uh, the public, because I'm not getting any help anywhere else. I'm asking for help for my daughter. Number 6. The Springfield Three This missing persons case, in which Cheryl Levitt, Stacy McCall, and Susie Streeter all disappeared, has remained unsolved since 1992. The story begins at Levitt's home in Springfield, Missouri, where the women spent the night after attending high school graduation parties. The girls leave the party just after 2 a.m. Cops believe Stacy and Susie walked through the front door of Cheryl's house on Delmar Street about 15 minutes later. That's where the mystery begins. When a friend arrived at the house the next morning, all three were missing, despite their cars being parked outside. Authorities say there was no sign of a struggle. In fact, the front door was unlocked, the TV was on, their clothes were still there, their purses and personal items untouched. The friend found a broken porch light, and she reportedly received an obscene phone call while there. Levitt's dog was also visibly agitated. When McCall's mother later arrived to investigate, she found a, quote, strange message on the answering machine, but this was accidentally deleted. It was a brief call, and the person didn't identify themselves. It was a male voice that made sexual in innuendos, and she hung up, and immediately received a second call with also making sexual overtones. Unfortunately, the crime scene was so badly contaminated that it prevented a proper investigation. But until then, these families will continue to live one day at a time, hoping for the best, but knowing the worst could be just around the corner. Number 5. Rebecca Corium. When this 24-year-old British woman disappeared the morning of March 21, 2011, she was working for the Disney Wonder cruise ship. The ship set sail from Los Angeles on Sunday, March the 22nd for the Mexican Riviera. The alarm was raised last Tuesday when she failed to turn up for her shift. The following day, the vessel docked in Puerto Vallarta, and the Mexican Navy and U.S. Coast Guard were deployed to search the seas. Coriam was last seen on CCTV footage 
talking to someone on one of the ship's internal phones at 5.45 a.m. She was clad in extra-large clothing and appeared visibly distressed by the call. She hung up, walked away, and was never seen again. Investigators believe that Coriam went overboard, but how she went overboard remains a mystery. Some believe she jumped, others believe she was pushed by a rogue wave, and her parents believe she was thrown into the ocean. A very, very little information comes back to us as to what the investigations found out. And that's the frustrating side that we face, really, and that's partially because of the problems of where the ship was registered. The official investigation has received loads of criticism, and Disney Wonder has even been accused of covering up her disappearance. Just don't know what happened to her, do we? That's the worst. Number four, Zeb Quinn. It's a loss without closure, with plenty of clues, but no resolution. On January 2nd, 2000, 18-year-old Zeb Quinn met up with his friend Robert Owens. After Quinn received a notification on his pager, however, he appeared frantic and allegedly sped away in his car. Two days later, after being treated at the hospital for injuries, Owens called in sick for Quinn. It's very complex, as you've reported on. Uh, Mr. Owens was a person of interest in the, in the, the Quinn disappearance from 2000, and uh, it, it, those kind of things do make the case, uh, you know, it does make the case much more complicated. On January 6th, Quinn's car was found abandoned with bizarre lipstick drawings on the back windshield and a live puppy stuck inside. His mother has some hope he could have been kidnapped and is still alive. In July 2017, Owens was charged with first-degree murder in the death of Quinn and is currently awaiting trial. He is also serving life in prison for ending the lives of the Food Network's Christy Schoen and her husband J.T. Codd in 2015. We're able to bring Jason Owens to justice. He's removed from society. He's going to die in the, in, in the custody of the state of North Carolina. As for Quinn, his exact fate remains a mystery. Number three, Harold Holt. In December 1967, Harold Holt was serving as the 17th Prime Minister of Australia. Holt was an avid outdoorsman, but nearly 60 years old. And his personal doctor had recently advised him against swimming. On the afternoon of December 17, 1967, Holt went for a swim at Australia's Cheviot Beach, despite rough waters. He was quickly swept out to sea, and a massive search was undertaken in the area. Rescuers trundled their way to the search scene from surrounding communities. Police and military divers deployed to Cheviot Beach by helicopter. Crowds silently lined the roadway. Despite the country's best efforts, no one was able to find any trace of Holt. A governmental inquiry was never launched owing to the wishes of Holt's family. This detail, among other factors, has led to numerous conspiracy theories. In Washington, where secret service men keep the president under strict surveillance, there was surprise that a prime minister could be allowed to swim without being closely watched. Despite countless claims to the contrary, the official ruling stands that Holt died in a tragic drowning. He had been claimed by the sea he knew and loved. Number two, D.B. Cooper. The story of D.B. Cooper is one of the most famous unsolved mysteries of all time, a story involving air theft, a cinematic escape, and an ambiguous outcome. The identity of D.B. Cooper has been a mystery since November 24, 1971, when a man calling himself Dan Cooper hijacked and threatened to blow up a passenger jet flying from Portland to Seattle. Cooper is the pseudonym of a man who hijacked a Boeing 727 in 1971 and extorted $200,000 in ransom. After securing the money, Cooper opened the door mid-flight and jumped out into the cold, dark night, never to be seen again. Police believe he left the 727 in the flatlands of Oregon or Washington, but they are still looking in four states, even around the airport. The only trace of Cooper remains a small cache of ransom bills that was recovered in 1980. The portion of ransom money a family discovered buried in sand while camping along a sandbar, Tina Bar, in the Columbia River in 1980. The rest of the money and D.B. himself remain missing. Many FBI agents claim that Cooper likely died in the jump. But then again, they could just be trying to save face. While probability now points to D.B. Cooper's death, Without hard evidence, many people today still believe that he survived. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Amelia Earhart 
If there's one unsolved story more popular than that of D.B. Cooper, it's that of Amelia Earhart. Earhart was a popular and renowned aviator and the first woman to fly solo over the Atlantic. The magnificent thing about Amelia is that in the eyes of the world, she never died. Her fear never witnessed, her failure never recorded. In 1937, she and navigator Fred Noonan attempted to circumnavigate the globe. However, they disappeared over the Pacific near Hawaii and were never heard from again. This grainy film records the last time Amelia Earhart and Fred Noonan are ever seen alive. Countless theories have been put forth regarding their ultimate fate, but no consensus has ever been made. Not a trace of wreckage was found floating. There was no mayday call, there was no distress call. For 70 years, investigators have been trying to solve the Earhart enigma. It's most likely that Earhart and Noonan ran out of fuel and crashed into the Pacific while desperately looking for Howland Island. It's a boring answer, but the most realistic often are. 